Hello Summoners and welcome back to our Team Fight Tactics YouTube channel. My name is Christoph and today I'll be teaching you all about the importance of board awareness. But before we get into that, I highly recommend you check out our TFT content over at ProGuides.com. We have a ton of guides and resources to help you guys get better at the game, as well as a ton of resources for League of Legends. Before we get started, we have to define our term. What is board awareness? Well, we define board awareness as the ability to monitor all of your opponent's boards and adjust your play accordingly. This means paying attention to their compositions, their positioning, and how they interact with your board and strategy. Alright, let me first give you guys an easy example. Currently, Gunslingers is one of the strongest comps in the game and is something you have to decide to go extremely early on. The entire idea behind Gunslingers is to roll all of your gold early to rapidly level up your units. It's a high-risk, high-reward strategy. If you hit the units you're looking for, then you're golden, but if you don't, then you'll be at a massive gold deficit. So how does this relate to board awareness? Well, let's say you're thinking about going Gunslingers because you roll in early Graves and Tristana. Before hard committing to re-rolling all of your gold away, you should look at the other players' boards. If you see that several other players have multiple gunslingers already on their boards, you might want to pass on going that comp. There's a limited number of each unit in the pool, and going a composition that several other players are already going and are ahead of you on is a recipe for disaster. But this doesn't mean that you have to completely alter your strategy just because several other players are going it. For an all or nothing comp like Gunslingers, then yeah, maybe you want to get out of it. But for something like Demons or Yordles, you can get by with running the lower tiers of these classes and origins. If too many players have Aatrox, then pick up Morgana and Varus. If you can't seem to find a Tristana, then opt for Lulu, Vagar, and Kennen instead. The point here is that you don't need to max out your synergies. Having several smaller synergies can oftentimes be the better option. This is the simplest form of board awareness. Looking at the compositions your opponents are going will let you know what you should and what you shouldn't do. It might even persuade you to alter your comp or build certain items. But what do we mean by that? Let's disregard the current meta for a second and just think hypothetically. Let's say a lot of the players in your game are going sorcerers and other units with high magic damage. Then picking up dragons might just win you the game. You could even go dragon's claw instead if you happen to have the items for it. The same thing can be said for physical damage. If there are a lot of on-hit comps like Rangers, Gunslingers, or Imperials, then you could opt for Knights to block a ton of that damage. Or if there are multiple Assassin players slaughtering you, picking up a couple Phantom Dancers might help your team survive their crits. It's even possible to tech in units to catch an opponent off guard. The most prominent tech unit in the game is currently Blitzcrank, but we're confident Riot will add similar units in the future. If you're in a 1v1 scenario and the enemy is running a massive backline hyper carry, tossing in a random blitzcrank could completely nullify their strategy and win you the game. The point is that you can and should alter what your composition will look like based on what the other players are doing. If you aren't adapting, then you're just going to be falling behind. Knowing what comps your opponents are running will let you know which units you should be looking to deny from them as well. Like we previously stated, there are a limited number of each unit in the pool. If you buy a unit that an opponent is looking for, then that's one less copy they won't be able to find. This can be incredibly useful and is definitely something you should employ when you either can't make an interest threshold or are in a late game situation with one or two opponents remaining. Here's an example for you. Let's say you're down to the top two and are 1v1ing your final opponent. You look over his board and you see he still has a couple level 1 units in his comp. Getting those upgrades will certainly make his comp stronger, which is the last thing you want. Instead of passively letting them play while doing your own thing, look to deny his units. If you see any of the major units that they're searching for while you're working on your game plan, feel free to pick them up and hold them on your bench. This strategy works especially well with 4 or 5 cost units, as they're the hardest ones to find, but can be done for any unit in the game. If you need the gold back, you can always sell the units with no loss. This will make your opponent's life that much harder and might even net you the win. Now that we've covered analyzing your opponent's compositions and adapting to them, we can get into the more difficult topic of positioning around their comps. The simplest form of this is knowing to either position on the left or right, or more appropriately, whether you want to mirror your opponent or be diagonal from them. If you're a ranger comp with multiple rapid fire cannons, then you probably want to be diagonal from your opponent to take advantage of your long ranged auto attacks and abilities. 
but if you're a large AoE comp like Sorceress, then you might want to mirror your opponent so their units stay clumped together. Regardless of which side suits you, you'll only figure out the optimal positioning by checking your opponent's boards. But that's not all. Positioning has teamfight implications for every champion in the game and is always contingent on both your and your opponent's positioning. Let's go over a ton of examples. For champions with AoE line skill shots like Varus, Aurelian Soul, and Misfortune, you ideally want them to hit as many units as possible. This generally means you'll want them to cut across the enemy team. The best positioning for this is having them perfectly diagonal from the enemy team, especially their carries. Arranging your units based on their ability is a key part of positioning. If you're running an assassin comp, then you want your strongest assassin to jump to their main carry. And as you know, assassins always jump to the furthest unit, so you need to place your carry assassin on the opposite side of the unit you want them to jump to. Last but not least, there's frontline positioning. Frontliners will draw aggro by being the first unit to walk into an opposing unit's attack range. If you have a tanky frontliner like Cho'Gath and a not-so-tanky bruiser like Aatrox, then you'll want the Cho to tank the brunt of the damage while Aatrox gets hit by one or two units off to the side. This will let Cho soak damage while still getting off his ult and buys time for Aatrox to deal damage and stack his ult without fear of dying. The thing about all these examples is they're contingent on the enemy's positioning. If the enemy flips to the other side of the board, then your perfect positioning could quickly turn into a nightmare. When multiple players are alive, you'll want to position around what's good for your comp, what the majority of players are doing, and the players that are constantly beating you. When it's down to just a couple players, you'll need to constantly check what they're up to and adjust accordingly. Positioning gets even more complicated when you consider specific units, which makes constantly checking your opponent's boards that much more important. For example, playing into a brawler composition with Blitzcrank would be impossible without checking their positioning. If the Blitz hooks in your main carry, then you're done. So you need to check where that Blitz is positioned and offer up your least valuable unit instead. This technique can even be performed when there's several players remaining. If there are two Blitzcrank players still alive in your game, look where the Blitzes are positioned at the beginning of each round, then position your carries to dodge them. There's no guarantee you'll fight them, but if you do, you'll be glad you moved. Similar to Blitzcrank, Zypher is an item that heavily relies on positioning around the opponent's board. If they have the Zypher, then you want to dodge it, and if you have the Zypher, then you're going to want to take out their carry. Either way, you'll have to compare boards constantly when using this item. Zypher always CCs the target directly mirroring the unit with the item, so move your units around to hit the desired target. The concept is pretty similar to Blitzcrank 1, so don't stress on it too much. Overall, board awareness is an essential part of becoming a great teamfight tactics player. You need to know what your enemies are doing so you can plan accordingly. Going in without that information is practically setting yourself up for failure, so make a good habit out of checking every board every round and you'll start climbing in no time. All right, that's it for our TFT board awareness video. Let us know what you guys think down below. If you want to see more videos like this, then click the sub button. Please let us know what you guys want to see next. We'd love to make some more content for you. And if you guys are interested in getting better at League of Legends this season, then please click the description link below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.